So yeah, there's uh, maybe four main alternatives to a root canal. Uh, one of them is to have the tooth extracted and get an implant, either a titanium implant or a zirconium implant. Another is to have the tooth extracted and get a porcelain bridge put in. Another option is a pulp cap. That's a very inexpensive procedure, but it's only a um, viable solution in a, in a small percentage of, of cases, in very specific cases, so you can Google that and find out which cases work for you. Um, you can also check out Dr. Spiller's website, drspiller.com. Um, and what's the fourth option is to get the tooth extracted and get a removable partial denture. So that's a little piece that goes where the tooth would be, and it connects to the other teeth. You want one with nylon clasps. Um, you want an acrylic or nylon. You don't want any metal in there. Uh, and it looks just like the tooth, and it chews just like the tooth, and it prevents the other tooth, the other teeth from slanting over and crowding and messing up your bite and causing TMJ and a bunch of other disorders. However, the RPD does not necessarily present bone resor prevent bone resorption. So um, let's talk about each of those options a little bit. So the important thing to remember is that none of these options are completely risk-free. Um, they all carry some risk. The only risk-free dental procedure is not a procedure at all. It's not getting a cavity in the first place or not getting a tooth infection in the first place. So what is a bridge? Um, Commonly what happens is a molar gets a, an infection, an abscess, um, and the tooth is extracted or pulled, and then what they do is they uh, you know, they seal it up, and and then they, they cut a little tiny piece into each adjacent tooth, you know, the tooth in front of it and the tooth behind it, right? And then they attach a porcelain bridge onto those two teeth that spans the distance between them. So in, in essence it really is a bridge that goes between two teeth to fill the gap left by one tooth. And a bridge, um, it doesn't look like a tooth, but it's white, so it does not not really not look like a tooth either. Um, and it does prevent the, the two uh, adjacent teeth from kind of growing together and messing up your bite and also the, the top tooth, or say you have a bottom molar removed, the top tooth will actually grow too long because there's an empty space there. Um, and things like that can really mess up your bite and you, you don't want that can mess up the alignment of your jawbone and you can actually get some pretty serious medical problems later on um, because of all the secondary problems caused by that. So the bridge solves those problems, but the bridge, um, which is usually made of porcelain by the way, um, the bridge does not prevent bone resorption. Uh, bone resorption is, well, the supporting bone that holds the tooth in place. When there's no tooth there, it just kind of disappears. Uh, so here's a picture of a person with bone resorption. Um, so what happened with this person is all of the front or about all of the uh, front teeth were removed, and the jawbone just starts disappearing. Now a small part of the jaw jawbone is still going to remain, but the part up here it just disappears, right? So when you have a bridge, that can still happen and often still does. Another thing about bridges is you can uh, the adjacent teeth. For the adjacent teeth, there is a risk of um, abscess and, and a cavity and needing a root canal. So they cut into the adjacent teeth and now there's an increased risk of eventually ne um, needing to extract those teeth as well. Another option, uh, alternative to a root canal, is a pulp cap. A lot of people don't know about this. It's a very, very inexpensive procedure, very cheap procedure. Um, the only thing is there th you can't use them in most cases. Um, so say you have uh, reversible pulpitis. What this means is uh, maybe your your tooth is sensitive to hot or sensitive to cold or maybe there's a very mild dull toothache or pressure at times. Um, the pulp is inflamed but it can be reversed and you may be a good candidate for a pulp cap. However, if you have irreversible pulpitis, which means the pulp is inflamed to the point where it won't heal itself, uh, in other words, um, you have really, really, really bad toothaches, uh, particularly at night, or the tooth is really sensitive to hot and cold, um, there's a good chance the pulp cap will simply not work. So, in a very small number of cases, you may be able to use a pulp cap um, as an alternative to a root canal. You can find a, a more information about pulp caps by doing a Google search. Another option is a RPD, or a removable partial denture. Now. Um, this is just a fake tooth, basically, and it goes into place um, a number of methods. Say you're replacing only one tooth and it's a molar, um, it's a little piece of acrylic or nylon, and there's little nylon clasps that hold it to the other teeth. 
Um, so this prevents the other teeth from growing into each other, and it prevents bite problems. And the teeth above it, or the tooth above it, or below it, to you know growing down and becoming out of place. Uh, but it doesn't prevent bone resorption still. And the only uh, option that really fights bone resorption is an implant because with an implant you're putting something right into the supporting bone there which means the bone is stimulated it has something to hold in place so it stays there you can still get bone resorption with an implant but this the chance of it is severely reduced depending on who you talk to um, the success rate of dental implants is 95 percent after 10 years or 97 plus percent after 10 years um, some dentists even uh, insure or guarantee their implants for the next say 30 years or so some guarantee them for as long as they're in business um, until their retirement so they they work they generally work for longer than root canals. The root canals only have a 90% chance of success over 10 years, which means you're going to be shelling out another few thousand dollars to get another one put in. Um, there's no risk of decay because a porcelain crown put on top of an implant can de can decay. Um, there's no additional risk of abutment teeth developing abscesses. Um, that you get with three unit bridges. So a three unit bridge is what I just talked about. Two little pieces that connect to the adjacent teeth and the big piece in the middle. Um, the, the teeth that it connect to can develop abscesses. You don't get that with an implant. Um, uh, here's what one dental website says about implants. Uh, bone needs stimulation to stay healthy. Because dental implants fuse to the bone, they stabilize it and prevent further bone loss. Resorption is a normal and inevitable process in which bone is lost when it is no longer supporting or connected to teeth. Only dental implants can stop this process and preserve the bone. All right? So implants can prevent bone resorption. It's not guaranteed, but it's a much better chance than the other methods. Uh, implants are generally made of zirconium or titanium. Um, zirconium implants have a higher level of osseointegration. Um, ceramic implants and crowns retain less plaque and calculus than titanium. 4% um, of people are allergic to titanium, according to the LTT Melissa test. Uh, some titanium alloys are contaminated with nickel. Titanium can corrode. Uh, vanadium, aluminum, and other metals are sometimes added to the alloy. So if you're somebody who tends to be uh, allergic to metals or sensitive to metals, you don't want to be getting a titanium dental implant. Uh, a lot of dentists don't offer zirconium dental implants. They haven't been on the market for that long. They've been on the market in Europe since 2005 and America since, I think, 2012. Um, so for uh, if you're looking for the lowest chance of future complications, uh, an implant, a zirconium implant is probably your best bet compared to the other three options. Now, if you're looking to save money, you may want to consider just getting the implant part of the implant and not the crown and instead putting a removable partial denture in place. So in the future you can go back to the dentist and get a crown put in when you have the money, but for now at least you have the implant preventing uh, bone resorption and you have the removable partial denture preventing the other teeth from crowding in, um, taking up the empty space and messing, messing up your bite for the coming years, right? So I, of course I encourage you to do plenty of research um, Talking to your dentist can be a good idea, but sometimes it's not, because I've had a lot of different dentists say a lot of different things. I've had dentists recommend root canals. I've had dentists recommend strongly against them. Um, some dentists uh, recommend bridges a lot. You know, there's a lot of different opinions out there, so go, you know, go on the internet, find some uh, reputable resources, and read about your options, right? I've done that, and I think that an implant is your best option, a zirconium implant. Leave your comments below. Your brain on.